Recently I started working on a multiplayer 2D platform fighter. Right now I only have the basic mechanics, but for something like this the character controller is such an important aspect that it's where I'm spending the majority of my time in, at least for now. Later I'm gonna have to focus on the networking part, but that's for another video. The thing about character control is that it's easy and hard. Yes, changing transform values is easy, the hard part is making it look smooth as well as making it physically make sense. The challenge is that Unity is a generalized engine that caters to many different styles of games. In most cases you'll see the documentation or official tutorials telling you to use the default character controller, which can work nicely in prototypes with limited variables, but it's not exactly physics based. It does detect collision, but will not give you physical attributes related to velocity, mass and friction. In the manual, Unity specifically says it feels wrong to use rigid bodies for character control because video game characters often move in unrealistic ways. This means that even if you already use the built-in character controller or use the sample project provided by Unity, you still have to define your own character movement on top of their code, not to mention you're going to be spending a lot of time fighting the framework. But what if you want players colliding in midair or maybe the other ones on the ground or against the wall doing wall jumps or they're dashing into each other? There's so many different scenarios that you have to consider and defining all your character movement through the default character controller is going to be a lot of work. I can sort of see myself using the character controller if I were to build something like Diablo 3 where details in physics is not the main feature, but for my project I want both physics and fast paced action. This is one place where I decided to go against the manual and try to come up with a physics based rigid body character control, meaning all the characters in the game are controlled through the rigid body. I'm not going to say one is simply better than the other, but it rather depends on the type of game you're making, so you should choose wisely. One thing that the rigid body excels in is collision detection and resolve. By the way, detecting collisions by itself isn't too complicated. Even if you're working without a commercial game engine like Unity, in most cases you're dealing with hitboxes and hurtboxes and AABB can work pretty well. The hard part is deciding what you want to do after detecting collision, in other words, resolving that collision. For example, you might have two boxes colliding like this. Do you move this box out of the way? Or do you move this box out of the way? In what direction? How do you know whether the collision came from the top or the side? Or maybe it came from the other side, really fast. Even if you know all these things, you still have to portray accurate physics, or at least some sort of reaction that makes sense. If you're interested, I recommend videos by One Lone Coder on solving some of these issues. Links are in the description. Luckily with Unity, if you have the right settings, you can expect the two physical bodies to never overlap. The character controller has this feature too, but the difference is in physical characteristics like force, acceleration, friction, bounce, mass, etc. Depending on your game design, you might not want those things for character movement, or maybe you do. Once you choose to go down the rigid body route, all you have to do now is decide what you want to do after the collision resolve. It's easier said than done, I know a lot of people have problems figuring out the settings, and I might have a separate video explaining the details, but for this video let's understand that Unity Physics does its job well, and defining all your character movement without the use of physics that's already there can sometimes be difficult. At this point you might realize that the rigid body is good for things like projectiles, bombs, bullets, arrows, basic objects that get thrown or shot or fired, travel a distance, and then not go through walls. Uni is good with these things, but rigid bodies might fall short on character control because you have to write a lot of code to implement the detailed movements of a human character. Things like run, strafe, turn, wall jump, roll, dash can be difficult to express with just rigid body and velocity. The question is then why the hell am I using it? To me it's easier to let Unity Physics handle the collision, and then writing code on how the rigid body should react after all the collisions have been resolved can mean less work, versus trying to define every physical behavior from scratch. But don't get me wrong, writing that sort of code is still hard, and deciding what's harder is going to be subjective. I'm just giving you my two cents here. Whichever method you choose, you still need years of programming experience not just to write it, but also put it together with a bunch of other systems like combat, networking, UI, animations, items, environment, storytelling, variable character stats, and more. Anyways, the rigid body component can give you most of the info you need to define your character movement. As you can see, I'm drawing debug lines with different colors for different types of collisions. As long as I'm using the rigid body and velocity, I have close to zero worries that the two physical bodies are going to overlap. I can try to run into the enemy, dash into a wall with lots of speed, step on top of the enemy, wall slide, wall jump, or simply fall off the wall. Unity Physics will ensure that these colliders behave like actual physical boxes, and I don't have to worry about them misbehaving, other than the bugs in my own code. What I do worry about is what happens when the boxes touch each other. So in this case, I'm stepping on the enemy like Mario. There's one particular fixed update where the top box touches the bottom box, and that's when I say jump. And that's about it. I also play the animation to give you the feeling of stomping on a physical body. And it's the same concept with wall slide, wall jump, or dash. All I'm doing is getting the info from the rigid body, all the collision detection and resolve are there, I just have to decide what I want in a particular fixed update. 
So that's pretty much it. There's many different ways to control a game object, which I have not mentioned in this video. For example, there's people that really prefer having a separate detector on the edges of your character. That might be good for certain types of games, but probably not for this one. The point is I want less moving parts, not more. You're more than welcome to disagree. If you have a repository of your own, we can always compare notes. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach me on my Discord server. All the links are below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.